Good evening and many thanks for joining us in the news at six here on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amayu and we'll begin now with a report that a helicopter conveying the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, has crash landed today in Kaba, Kogi State. Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Publicity, Lao Lua Konde, who confirmed this, said Professor Oshimbanju and his aides came out of the crashed helicopter on hot. Akonde added that the Vice President has continued his engagement in the state. Meanwhile, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbanju, says he is alive following the crash. Oshimbanju, who confirmed his safety after the crash via his Twitter handle, thanked everyone who expressed concern and thanked the crew who managed the situation well. And away from that report, the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, has expressed concern over allegations of home raids, killing rapes, robbery and physical assaults against workers, women, children and civilians during the crackdown of protests by the Zimbabwean security forces. NLC President Ayuba Waba, who led his, his members on a solidarity march to Zimbabwe Embassy in Abuja, called on the government to release the General Secretary of the Zimbabwean Congress of Trade Unions, ZCT. You, Jafet Moyo, and other trade union leaders arrested in connection with the protest. We are here as NLC. We are here as wiki working people and women of Nigeria to show our solidarity and also to express our disdain to the president of Zimbabwe because it has shown clearly that he has taken the law into his hands. Secondly, he has also undermined citizens' right to protest freely on policies that are anti people. We demand that there should be an end to this carnage. We demand that all our trade unionists, including the General Secretary of the Zimbabwean Congress of Trade Union, Comrade Japet, should be released unconditionally. We demand also that the rape going on in the country on our women should stop. We demand that the killing must be brought to an end and incessant arrests should also be brought to an end. We say shame to the president of Zimbabwe. Yeah. Rated his support for NLC for democracy and the support of NLC for democracy and the rule of law everywhere and at all times. I think that what should have passed on as a civil action in democratic climes was met with disproportionate use of force culminating into widespread suppression and violations of fundamental human rights of Zimbabweans by the military and security forces. It is criminal for any government to turn around and kill a citizen. The blood of those citizens will surely be on the shoulders of Mungwagwe. Yes. And therefore, we demand also that the UN deploy all its machineries to make sure that this issue is addressed. And therefore, we want to say once again that we condemn in very strong terms the condition and situation of citizens, workers, women, children in Zimbabwe. We say no to such carnage and we demand justice. We demand stoppage. Yes. We demand the liberation of all people that have been under illegal detention in that country. In fact, it should be held responsible for whatever happened to those citizens. Am I speaking your voice? Yes. Yes. And ahead of the 2019 poll, the United Nations UN has called on Nigerians to firmly reject all undemocratic and negative voices that seek to promote conflict and disrupt the general elections. The UN Secretary General's Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel, Mohamed Chambers, made the call at the conclusion of a two-week pre-electoral mission to Nigeria. He called on all candidates, political parties, state institutions and citizens to abide by their commitments to ensure free credible and peaceful elections. He also encouraged each camp to uphold his commitment and refrain from actions capable of inciting confrontation and violence during and after the elections. And now on party politics, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has accused the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and its presidential flag bearer, President Muhammad Buhari, of using the visit of the Nigerian governors during his campaign in Kano State to import miscreants into the country. PDP, who disclosed this through its national publicity secretary, Kola Ologbondion, alleged that President Buhari and APC rented crowd for the Kano rally because they could not mobilize Nigerians. 
the opposition for the alleged that the APC and President Buhari are accommodating the foreigners for use in violence allegedly planned ahead of the February 16 elections. The party also said President Buhari and the APC in their desperation have compromised the country's territorial integrity as a nation and this portends grave danger to national security and sanctity of the electoral process. And now the All Progressives Congress APC in Lagos State has reiterated its commitment to achieve a victory in the 2019 gubernatorial election slated for March 2nd. At the second mega rally of the party in the Korodu area of the state, chieftains and lovers of the party in the attire tax residents of Lagos State to go out and mass to ex exercise their franchise. Prominent Yoruba actors and actresses who spoke at the campaign trail lent their voices to a peaceful election just as the party stalwarts expressed confidence in their victory. We are here to showcase our candidates to let the world know the caliber of people we have that they are ready to serve and they are capable to serve. We have been uh, using all sorts of uh, techniques. First, I have to ask campaign, stakeholders, not only the party, but the artisans, the CDC, all those people that matters. We have called them to places and we have been addressing them, telling them what we are going to do. They have seen what we have been doing and they will know that we will continue. We are having the mega rally of our party the APC. At the poll, we will show them our ability, our power, that we are the, we have the support of the masses. It is at the poll that we will tell them that we are in control of Lagos State. Our antecedent in the state has proven us beyond any reasonable doubt. And still on the 2019 election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has been warned against the use of National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, in the forthcoming general election. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, gave the warning at the party's secretariat in Ikeja, Lagos. The report. The race for the Lagos state governorship election is gathering momentum. But the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is not satisfied with some political development in the state. Addressing journalists at the party secretariat, chairman of the party, Adigbola Dominic, read a riot act on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, saying the agreement signed between INEC and the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NERTW, particularly in the movement of electoral materials on election day, is totally unacceptable to his party. The Labour State PDP condemns and rejects in totality the announced agreement between INE and NURTW to respect the transportation and delivery of election materials before, during and after the period. PDP also warned that if INEC does not cancel the arrangement, they will take the election as unfair. On his part, Olabode George and other party stalwarts advocate peaceful and credible election. For the sake of our nation, the future of this country depends on this election. Because, let us imagine, the other ones, what will happen to our party? Three and a half years, my organ was leading the country. Are you better off today than me? No! They don't need to force you. If you want the real change, Atiku has served this nation. He has worked for this nation. He has seen the, the, the top of the mountain and the bottom of the valley. 
chances of PDP in Lagos is very bright. Of course, you know that the person who is even the candidate of uh, APC already has serious crisis of acceptance, and the incumbent is also a serious crisis of not being uh, disgraced out. Now we are going to capitalize on that lacuna. As a political party, we are strategic. We are strategic, and we know what we do. It remains to be seen whether INEC will consider the demand of PDP or go ahead with its early arrangement. Only time will tell. And now the Director General of the People's Democratic Party PDP campaign organization in Gombe State, Bala Tinka, has backed President Muhammadu Buhari's re-election bid following his defection to the All Progressives Congress, APC. The special assistant to the President on media and publicity, Femi Adesino, who made the announcement in a statement, said Tinka, who met with President Buhari, pledged allegiance to the APC. He also vowed to bring his political weight to bear on the election of the president for his second term in office. And now on the ASU strike, the meeting between the federal government and the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has been adjourned till Thursday, February 7, 2019. The meeting makes it the ninth time the striking lecturers are meeting with the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ingege, to resolve the industrial action which has lingered for almost three months. Speaking to journalists at the end of the meeting, the Labor Minister as well as the ASU President said they are making progress. You'll recall that the lecturers proceeded on strike on November 4, 2018, in protest of what they described as poor welfare, university revitalization, among other demands. And still in the education sector, the National Universities Commission, NUC, has recognized the establishment of the Bayelsa Medical University, Yenogwa. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Abubakar Rashid, who issued the letter of recognition to a high-powered delegation led by the state governor, Syriac Dixon, at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja, said contributions of the governor to the development of education in Bayelsa and his credibility and him the approval. The essence of what a university should be, and that is to bring together universal community, to build a universal community of learners, teachers and learners together to interact, to develop knowledge, to disseminate knowledge, and now to help solve some key problems in communities, in societies, and in nations. What is unfortunate for us in this country today is that many of our universities are losing that character, that universal character, and this is very unfortunate. They are assuming some tribal, regional, ethnic, or religious colorations, and it's dangerous. Governor Dixon, as I say truly, is showing the light, is showing the way of how to build a university. Dixon did criticize the belief that university education is considered cheaper than nursery and primary schools and blamed inadequate funding on leadership. In Bayelsa, furthering the course of education is one of the most important programs of our restoration government. Not only did we declare an emergency in education 2012 when we took over, from then on, we marched words with action, made critical investments at all levels of education, primary school education, building schools and staff quarters, teachers' quarters, built in all the remote communities for the first time to make life and learning and teaching uh, easier, even at that level. Investment in education remains the priority of his administration. 
away from the education sector. Three persons have been confirmed dead, while 11 others sustained injuries on Friday night in an accident involving a white Mazda bus and a tipper at Sowo Village on the Abiokuta Shagamo Interchange Expressway. The spokesperson, Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Corps in Ogun State, Babatunde Akimbi, confirmed the incident to journalists in Abiokuta on Saturday. Akimbi said the accident occurred around 7.30 p.m. on Friday and was caused by the tipper driver who was making an illegal U-turn before the commercial bus rammed into it. A total number of 14 passengers were in the bus, eight female and six male. The male died, three male died, while eight female and three male sustained a various degree of injuries. You're still watching News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. We'll take a break now and we'll return with business stories. Do stay with us. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us on the news and now on the business scene. In the oil and gas sector, President Muhammadu Buhari has flagged off the spot in of Kolamani River in Gongola Basin of the Upper Benue Trough, trough in Bauchi State. According to the President, the exploration for crude oil is part of his administration's promise in terms of growing Nigeria's economy, adding that the government has worked hard to fulfill its promises. He also said the renewed commitment in oil exploration by his administration is a long-term economic plan that must be sustained in the next level. And on the economy, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, says Nigeria has enough capacity to repay its debt obligations, which stands at about $22.08 billion. The minister, who disclosed this at the Deloitte Economic Outlook Conference, said the government is not worried about the country's rising debt, as the debt to gross domestic product ratio is still low compared to other countries. According to the minister, the federal government has been very strategic in accumulating is debt, adding that the debt were being massively invested in the development of infrastructure. And now the governorship candidate of the Action Democratic Party, ADP, Babatunde Badamusi, has decried the use of third party in the collection of taxes by the government. Badamusi condemned this act in an interview with Superscreen's political editor, Adenike Owoye Ajiboye, in Lagos State. He maintained that if he emerges as the governor of Lagos State, he will put an end to the private tax company in the state, Alpha Beta. We're going to end the era of tax consultancy in Lagos. We're going to end it. Uh, government is being paid taxes to do a job. You know, the staff of government are there to do a job, and they should be able to do that job. The idea of touts going out on the road to go and stop motorists and to go and stop people and collect money from them has to end. This is the digital era. These payments can be made digitally. Okay, uh, these payments can be sent to people. The, the request for payment can be sent to people digitally, and the payments can be made digitally. Yeah, we don't need people to go out on the roads to go and you know cost mayhem and just be nuisances to Nigerians. Uh, the, at the same, by the same token, um, we're also going to be ending the era of Alpha Beta in Lagos State. You know, the idea that uh, one company can take nine billion every month from Lagosians. That's going to end. Uh, we're going to take those funds and apply them to regenerating Lagos, starting with eight local governments uh, that we have put in the Lagos Integrated Regeneration Plan, which we've designed for the betterment of Lagosians. And electorates to go out on election day to exercise their franchise. Well, my word to the electorate is, look, if you don't vote, if you don't go and exercise your right to vote, the professional politicians, the crooks that have been running Lagos for the last 20 years will get somebody else to vote on your behalf. That's what they've always done. Okay, it's not new. So I need you to go out there. You need to go out there for your own sake. Go and vote. This time, take your PVC. Go to the polling unit. Vote. And now on power generation, Nigeria has recorded an increase of 1,811.3 megawatts 
in power generation in January 2019 as a transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, transmitted 127,157.7 megawatts as against 125,346.4 megawatts in December 2018. The daily statistics of TCN operations obtained by journalists indicates that 127,157.7 megawatts was generated between January 1st and 31st. This translates this translates to an increase of 1,811.3 megawatts harvested from the ongoing Nigerian Independent Power Project, NIPP, to the national grid. And we'll take another quick break now. When we return, we'll bring you stories from the international scene and sports. Do join us again. <laughs> 